Please see the link in the description to download a worksheet for this video. We suggest that viewers who are sensitive to the life sciences have an adult watch this video first to ensure it is suitable for that viewer. If you have not already done so, we recommend that you first watch part one of Animal Adaptive Traits before watching this video. This butterfly was born last month in this Canadian field. It's September in Canada, so it's getting too cold for this butterfly to survive. In a few days, it will start a 2,500-mile trip to Mexico, where it will live for a short while, and then the equivalent of its great-grandchildren will return to these fields in March. It will take the next three generations working one after another to make the return trip from Mexico to Canada. That means there are four generations involved in one round trip. Every butterfly will be flying over states that it has never seen before and without the guide of any butterfly that has ever flown there. And yet, each butterfly knows which way to go. This monarch migration is just one of many long trips that a wide variety of animals make every year to survive harsh environments. In this video, we will introduce the last two challenges that individual members in a species must solve for the species to remain in existence. Number three, avoid dying due to a harsh environment. And number four, some of its members must start the next generation. Like monarch butterflies, many birds fly thousands of miles from cold climates during the autumn towards warmer climates where they stay during the winter months. Then in the spring, just before the temperature gets too hot, those birds migrate back to the cooler climates, where they stay until the autumn. In the autumn, African wildebeest walk south hundreds of miles towards greener grass and more plentiful water. Then in the spring, they return back north. Many other herbivores make this trip, including herds of zebras and gazelle. They take a slightly different route each time. Like in the air and on land, there are also migrations in the oceans. Every year, Humpback whales spend their winters in warm waters and then swim to cool waters during the summer. For example, there is a population that spends their winters near Hawaii and swims thousands of miles to Alaska for the summer. For animals who do not migrate, some withstand the cold months by growing thick layers of fur. Feathers are very good insulators and keep birds warm. These light gray markings may represent feathers that help keep this dinosaur warm. It's hard to find food in the winter since many plants stop growing, so animals search through the snow. Others, like squirrels, live off stockpiles of food they may have collected in the fall. Some species cope with the food shortage by going into a sleep-like state and live off their fat reserves in a process called hibernation. Bears are well known for doing this, but other animals do this too, such as other mammals like chipmunks, reptiles like some turtles, amphibians like frogs and insects like bumblebees. As the temperature warms and the spring and plants begin to grow, the animals awaken from hibernation and restart the food chain. Groundhog Day celebrates the day when groundhogs end their hibernation. As the summer arrives, the days get hotter, which also challenges animals. Mammals will shed their winter coats. Humans and horses sweat as a way to keep cool, but few other animals can do this. When it gets very hot, animals pant as a way to remove heat from their bodies. Dogs do this frequently, but cats and birds also have this adaptive behavioral trait. If there are trees available, then animals will move into the shade where it's cooler. Elephants will use their ears to cool themselves like giant fans. Reptiles move into and out of the shade to adjust their body temperature. Dealing with a water shortage can be a huge challenge. These mudskippers can live outside of water for short periods of time because they have an adaptive trait that lets them breathe through their skin. When lakes dry up, lungfish can live outside of water for months at a time because, in addition to gills, they have lungs. Although camels do not store water in their humps, they do store fat there. And they have many adaptive traits that help them survive hot and dry deserts, including the ability to eat cacti since the insides of their mouths are very tough. Horses lack the physical adaptive traits that camels have, but have an adaptive behavioral trait for dealing with droughts which is that they will dig a hole six feet deep to make a well. Next, let's look at some adaptive traits that species use to start the next generation. Young animals of a species are vulnerable to predators, since young animals are slower and weaker than fully grown animals of that species. For this reason, some species make homes to protect their young. Many bird species build nests or choose nesting locations that predators cannot reach. These homes are very complicated to make, 
Yet the animals have adaptive behavioral traits that tell them how to do this. They are not taught by other animals. Rather than building high above the ground, other species like groundhogs and foxes build tunnels underground that are too small for predators to go into. Beavers build very elaborate dams that have a den inside. Although many species have only the mother raise the young animal, some species have both parents share in the work to build the home and bring enough food for the growing offspring. Insects, such as ants and bees, use a communal approach in which thousands of adults all work together to make the hive and bring back food. But even if an animal's home is built well and located in a safe place, it may still be vulnerable to predators or environmental challenges. Perhaps the ideal solution to those problems is to keep the young with the mother at all times. This is what marsupials do, which includes kangaroos. Mother kangaroos have an adaptive trait of having a pouch. And young kangaroos have an adaptive behavioral trait to sit in that pouch. Here's a quick quiz. This mother and her child feed these ducks every day. Now, when the ducks see the people walk towards the lake, the ducks swim towards the people even before they take the food out. Is this tough behavior an adaptive trait? No, this is not an example of an adaptive trait. All adaptive traits are in the genes, which means animals are born with them. Another word for adaptive behavioral traits is instincts. Although instincts are very complex, like how to build a nest, the animals were born knowing how to do this. In contrast, the ducks have learned that this child and her mother will give them food and have learned to get there quickly before the food runs out. Learned behaviors are not adaptive traits. Here's a summary of this topic. Please pause the video if you wish to read this. If you're interested in practice tests that are similar to state exams, but with detailed, colorful explanations for each answer, then please see our apps in the App Store. Many of these are free and none expire or limit their function. Since we only make educational products for children, none of our apps have third-party advertising, in-app purchasing, or connect to the internet. Please subscribe if you'd like to be notified of future educational videos we make. Thanks for your attention.